Over the past few years, Robocraft has grown leaps and bounds and developed massively as a game. The number of improvements, bug fixes, and new content that have been added are impressive, but inevitably, some things have been removed, some systems and mechanics lost. Today, I will be discussing one set of mechanics that has largely been missing from the game for some time, and that I think can be feasibly reworked and reintroduced to help keep Robocraft's battlefield unique and diverse. That set of mechanics is weapon firing patterns and how energy is converted into damage. Up until about a year ago, each weapon in Robocraft fired quite differently from each other. SMGs fired in a round robin, plasma would discharge in a salvo, rails would charge up and fire in a volley, Tesla blades would deliver their damage on impact, annihilating the Tesla blade in the process, while nanotech disruptors would fire short range beams to heal their allies. There were five types of weapons in the game, and each weapon functioned very uniquely and occurred to varied playstyles. SMGs would be frontline brawlers taking the brunt of the damage, rails would find an advantageous sniper spot and pick apart enemies from afar, plasmas would play peekaboo trying to land a direct hit with their salvo for maximum damage, etc. In February of 2016, the maximum loadout update hit the servers and brought many new features and game mechanics. Chiefly among these were the ability to mount multiple weapon types on a robot and a power system. This update brought many highly requested and necessary features to Robocraft. In order to simplify the transition to this loadout and energy based system, weapons were reworked to function like the SMGs using a round robin firing pattern. As of December 2016, this is the breakdown of firing patterns for Robocraft's weapons. Lasers, plasmas, railguns, nanotech disruptors, Tesla blades, ions, protoseekers, and lock on missile launchers all use round robin firing. There are two weapons in Robocraft that do not use round robin firing for their damage delivery, and those two weapons are the Chain Shredder and the recently reworked Aeroflak. The Chain Shredder has a spool up, spool down period, while the Aeroflak was recently reworked to have a damage stack multiplier for consecutive successful hits on a target, giving it a very satisfying feel that is unique to only that weapon. Both the Chain Shredder and Aeroflak have warm up firing patterns where their damage per power increases with use. 8 round robin weapons and 2 warm up weapons. When so many weapons fire by the same pattern, the diversity in the game is compromised and similar playstyles are encouraged between all of those weapons. The main challenge here is to rectify the power system and the multiple unique firing patterns. My proposal here is to expand the number of unique firing patterns from the current 2 up to 5, while smoothly integrating into the existing power system and permitting large and varied loadouts to be used effectively. I will start with the pattern we currently know very well, Round Robin. Round Robin firing works by putting all the guns in a queue and cycling through each gun individually and consuming power each time. The weapons best suited for Round Robin firing are lasers and ions, much as we see them in Robocraft currently, with the exception of the fire rate. The current weapon cap system is non-linear, counterintuitive, and adds unnecessary complexity to the game. If you double the number of guns you have, it seems you should fire twice as quickly, do twice as much damage, and consume twice as much power. The power to CPU system we have now is more than capable of balancing these min-max builds. The next pattern, which we already touched on, is the warm-up pattern. Simply put, the weapon improves in its damage per power efficiency the longer you use it. The weapons best suited for this are the currently existing Aeroflak and Chain Shredder. The third pattern which I would like to introduce is the drop pattern. In this pattern, a weapon when fired will attempt to simultaneously fire as many guns as possible with the available energy. If there is insufficient power to discharge every weapon in that loadout slot, it will fire as many weapons as the robot has energy to do. There would be a cooldown time between each salvo, balanced per individual weapon. The weapons best suited for drop firing would be plasmas and lock-on missile launchers. Using a drop pattern, plasmas would fire again in salvos and reward precise aiming. The Goliath in Plasma under this system could also regain its original unique trait of being a double shot weapon. Lock on missile launchers being used in multiples would offer another unique playstyle of launching salvos of missiles and would look like an Apaki attack helicopter, albeit at a much higher power cost. This next pattern is the continuous pattern. Weapons firing in a continuous pattern, as the name suggests, would fire continuously like a beam. The power consumption and damage rate would be based off of the number of guns in use at a linear rate. In the event of power failure, the visual intensity of the beams, as well as their damage or healing, would decrease accordingly. 
The weapons best suited for this are nanotech disruptors and protoseekers. For these weapons, it is primarily an aesthetic change, having them fire a continuous beam as opposed to pulsing and firing round-robin projectiles as they do now. Their role and utility in battle would remain largely unchanged from how it is currently, but would distance them from round-robin weapons. Protoseekers have been critiqued as being auto-aim, short-range lasers, and this would help diversify them and give them a unique aesthetic niche. The final pattern I have to propose is easily the most unique pattern, the capacitor pattern. Weapons firing in a capacitor pattern front load their power consumption by charging the guns before they are used. When a weapon in a capacitor pattern is selected in the loadout, it will immediately consume power to charge all of the weapons in that loadout slot. If the power demand is greater than the power available on the robot, it will continue charging the weapons as more power is generated until all weapons are fully charged. If the player switches to another loadout slot, unused energy will be returned to their power bar up to full. Energy consumption is based off number of guns in a linear fashion. The weapons best suited for this are rail guns and tesla blades. Rails under this system could be restored to their volley system, and tesla blades could once again deal damage on impact as opposed to the chainsaw style we have presently. Rails could have as many or as few rails as they like, and both large and small rails would be viable. A low CPU robot would be able to quickly charge its rails or teslas, while a high CPU rail or tesla bot could be a big damage deal or two, but would need to spend lots of time charging its weapons before making an attack. If implemented in part or in whole, this system of firing patterns would help diversify the Robocraft battlefield and solidify the specialities of several weapon and bot types. Additionally, it would help fix the monotonous sameness in the aesthetics of most weapons and make the game a much more visually appealing and di diverse landscape. We would be able to go from this to this. Battles in Robocraft can be become much more interesting and appealing both visually and strategically, as bots and players use their power bar in different ways and have more playstyles to play and to counterplay. I love this game just as much as the next person, and I look forward to watching it grow and develop for years to come. I truly believe implementing this system will help further the development of Robocraft and cater to the unique nature of build, drive, fight that this game is unparalleled in. I hope you found this video informative and representative of changes that could help shape the progress of Robocraft. If you have questions, critiques, or feedback on these ideas, feel free to engage in discussion in the comments, on Twitter, or on the Robocraft forums where this video will be posted. If you enjoyed this video, I thank you for your patronage. If not, then I'm sorry, but I can't please everyone. Special thanks to Avic and Jack733 for giving me permission to use clips from their videos in order to make this one. Until next time, though, good luck, have fun, and do take care.